This is the Potomac Bassmasters event on the Chickahominy River in uh, April of 24. Sorry about the bug on the screen. It'll get cleared off after a while. It was cool, overcast morning. Uh, day before, I had clued into a pattern of fish on shallow cypress trees, and that's the way my partner and I started out this morning is uh, fishing some of those, those cypress trees in shallow water. This is about um, midway down the river from... Uh, the dam to the James. Oh, damn it. Oof. There's a boil over there. Yeah. <clears throat> it had me wrapped around something. I couldn't put the hook on it. There it is again. Getting it. There you go. Not big, but. First one in the boat. You can see I stuck that fish just a little bit on the first one, but he still bit again when I threw back, so always make that second cast. <laughs> but you're right, I'm glad to have something back, man. He's barely 12. Keep him for now, hopefully I can kill him later. You wouldn't believe it. Uh, my parents came up last weekend and I took them out fishing. My dad caught a blue crab on a chatterbait. On a chatterbait. <laughs> on a chatterbait. It hooked on to the back trailer as he was slow rolling it in. <laughs> and he, he didn't get it in the boat, but we saw it right next to the boat as it let go. While we were on that other side, I did hook into another fish that broke me off. I don't think it was huge. I think I had a furry in my line and I should have retied, but I didn't. Uh, but it was a lost opportunity, so we moved over here to this other side to try some docks and see what happened. Somewhere in here, just before or just after this, my co-angler did catch one on a chatterbait, rolling it alongside the docks there. He's healthy, but he is short. He's chunky. Yeah, he don't make it. He's 11. <laughs> So after fishing that stretch of docks with the cypress trees mixed in there a little bit, uh, we decided to make a big move. We ran way down river, um, almost all the way to the James. The, the water was a little uh, dirtier down there, and there were a bunch of cypress trees I knew we could come up on. So we started out uh, in a little deeper water, say four or five feet deep, uh, and twitching around the trees and didn't catch much. And as we moved up closer into the shallow water, this was only a, a foot and a half, two feet deep, th maybe three in some places. That's when we started getting nice. bit. Bad catch. <laughs> That's a much better fish. Yeah. Thank you. It's stuff. It's cotton there. I got it. You can just drop it. All right. Thank you. It's good. Yeah. Uh, need a few more of those. He thump it hard? What's that? Did he thump it hard? Uh, it, kind of soft. Kind of soft, though? While I continued to fish with a wacky rig, my co-angler behind me threw uh, plastics a little bit and also was throwing a chatterbait. Um, a little while later, he'll pick up a popper. Uh, he was fishing them all slow, and he was picking up a few fish that I didn't didn't get. I, I did try throwing a spinner bait in there uh, a bit. I uh, tried a square bill for a little while. It was picking up a bunch of junk, but uh, I just couldn't get it hit on anything that was moving very fast. Back here. 
probably just heard me say now we're culling. I missed a, a fish catch in there or two. I, I had uh, five in the boat at this point. I still had two that were right at 12 inches, so I really needed to cull those out of there. My scale is right. That's a solid one pound upgrade. Nice. There you go. Yeah, I'll say that's, <laughs> that's a little bit of an upgrade. Up to this point, it had all been rising tide, which probably explains why they were up so shallow. But uh, at this point, we're, we're coming into the slack tide, but we're still catching them up in the shallow area. Definitely a good move to come down here. <laughs> another <laughs> that'll help Sometimes, like today, it seems like slow is the only way to go. Uh -huh. Sometimes, you know, okay, I'm going to fish the same thing you're fishing because that's the only thing that bites you. But at the beginning of the day, grab something different. That way you're good. You're, you're giving the fish something different to look at, whether the fish wants something different, or, and, and you're, you're both, you know, trying something different. So you zero in on what it needs to be. Swim jig, chatterbait. Yeah, you have caught them on moving baits. I haven't. I mean, I kind of gave up on them. I don't have the confidence in them today. But yeah, but I'm, I'm throwing them pretty slow. Not like, like right now I'm fishing it fast, but typically I'm throwing it pretty slow. 
in the same places I would throw a worm. Too. Coming right at me. Damn, oh. there it is. On it. Did he already catch you? <laughs> Look how pale that fish is. Yeah. I like the way that hook's getting them right in the roof of the mouth every time. Yep. I can't tell. Yeah, it's a decent one. It's a good one. Uh, there we go. Woo, nicely done. <laughs> oh my gosh, I choked You weren't it. even looking when that happened. No, I you? wasn't. I was trying to see what crashed in the woods. <laughs> My co-angler had been throwing a popper over the top of some cypress knees and one came up and snagged it for him. Uh, pretty decent fish, about two and a half pounds, allowed him to call one. I said a minute ago that the hook I was using was catching them all right in the top of the mouth and I, I really like that hook. I um, want to tell you just a little bit about this. When I fish a wacky rig, I usually use a weighted, uh, some people call it a flick shake rig, something that looks like this. Um, I've stopped, started getting away from that because when I try to skip it, it tends to get the line caught up in it really bad. So I've gone to a, a new rig called the Cheb Rig, which these little things allow you to take that pen out and you can put any hook you want in there. And then uh, you can uh, use that and it, uh, it frees the hook and the wacky rig are kind of free swinging. It gives it a little bit better action. I'll do a video on this in more Definitely detail in the future. I had found these owner weedless sniper hooks and I really liked them. The shape of them is really good. They have titanium guards. The problem is the titanium guard is uh, put on there with resin. And so you essentially catch one fish and the guard breaks, which if you're catching a four or five pounder, that's not bad. But unfortunately, they're not all four or five pounders. So I instead found this uh, hook, which is a little bit hard to find, but uh, I can get it on Tackle Warehouse. And instead of using resin, it has the um, guard put on there with thread. So what I found is when the fish hits it, it kind of pushes the guard around on the hook. Um, and then after I take the fish off, I can just twist it back into place and it continues to work. So I get a lot better uh, utilization out of these hooks, so a lot more efficiency. Yep, go for it. <laughs> if I get stuck, you take advantage of it if you can. Oh, yeah. Quickly. Yeah. There's a young kid. I threw a buzz bait a long time yesterday and didn't get anything on it. I guess the popper's a little different, moving a little slower. I had a topwater rat out for a while, but I never tied it on. Oh, that feels like a good fish. Six. I don't think so. Oh, he's got a black spot on the fin. Another one in the roof of the mouth. At this point, we have about an hour and a half or two hours left in the event. Uh, somewhere in here, I had hooked a really good fish. It went from very shallow to kind of underneath the boat and out towards what is deeper water. I fought it for probably about 30 or 45 seconds, and unfortunately it came unbuttoned. I never saw it, but it really felt like a good one. Uh, the guy that won the tournament caught one fish. I caught a, a limit of fish, but one of his fish was 7 pounds and 8 ounces, and uh, he beat me by about 5 pounds. I came in second place, so that uh, that one fish made up the difference in, in uh, my 2.5-pound fish, and 
and won him the tournament, unfortunately, uh, except for that one that I broke off earlier and potentially the one that I lost. I didn't have anything for him, but I don't think either one of those fish was a seven pounder. So uh, congratulations to Chris Donovan for his win. Uh, my co-angler did a great job, uh, caught a limit of fish. He came in second. Uh, he came in second by about uh, two tenths of a pound. So uh, he just needed one more good bite and he would have been there as well. Appreciate you watching. Please like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.